Jeremy Clarkson, the outspoken television personality, recently launched a scathing attack on Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. Known for his controversial opinions and blunt manner, Clarkson did not hold back in his latest tirade. In his column for The Sun, Clarkson unleashed a torrent of vitriol, expressing his deep-seated hatred for the Duchess. His words were not just critical, but filled with an intense animosity that shocked many readers. Clarkson's diatribe, riddled with misogynistic and hateful language, sent shockwaves through the media landscape, sparking widespread condemnation and igniting a fierce debate about the boundaries of free speech. The column quickly became a hot topic on social media, with many people expressing their outrage and disbelief. This wasn't just about disagreeing with someone's views. It was a vicious, personal attack designed to humiliate and demean. The language used by Clarkson was seen by many as crossing a line, moving from criticism to outright abuse. The column, published in a mainstream newspaper with a wide readership, served as a stark reminder of the insidious power of the media. It highlighted how influential figures can use their platforms to spread harmful rhetoric. Clarkson's words, amplified by the platform afforded to him, had the potential to incite hatred and prejudice against the Duchess. The impact of such statements can be far-reaching, affecting public perception and potentially leading to real-world consequences. His words were a stark reminder of the work that still needs to be done to create a more just and equitable society. The incident has sparked conversations about the responsibility of media personalities and the need for more respectful discourse in public forums. My reaction to Clarkson's column was one of utter disgust and revulsion. It was as if the words themselves were dripping with venom, each sentence more toxic than the last. His words, dripping with venom and malice, were not merely an expression of opinion, but a deliberate attempt to incite hatred and vitriol against Meghan Markle. The column was not just offensive. It was a calculated attack designed to stir up animosity and division. This wasn't about free speech. It was about hate speech, pure and simple. Free speech is a fundamental right, but it comes with responsibilities. When words are used to harm and degrade, they cross a line. Clarkson's column was a masterclass in misogyny and bigotry, a toxic blend of personal insults and unfounded accusations designed to demean and humiliate. It was a stark reminder of the deep-seated prejudices that still exist in our society. His words, devoid of any journalistic integrity, betrayed a deep-seated prejudice that has no place in a civilized society. Journalism should be about truth and fairness, not about spreading hate and division. We cannot allow such toxic rhetoric to go unchecked. We cannot allow hate to become normalized. It is our collective responsibility to stand up against such divisive and harmful language. Freedom of speech does not give anyone the right to incite hatred and violence. It is a privilege that must be exercised with care and respect for others. We must draw a clear line between free speech and hate speech, ensuring that our words build bridges, not walls. Clarkson's column, published in a mainstream newspaper, highlighted the immense power and responsibility that comes with a platform. Words have consequences, and when uttered by someone with Clarkson's reach and influence, those consequences can be far-reaching and deeply damaging. The media has a duty to inform, to educate, and to hold power to account. It is not a platform for spreading hatred, bigotry, and misinformation. Clarkson's column was a gross abuse of that power, a blatant attempt to incite hatred against Meghan Markle. This incident should serve as a wake-up call for the media industry. News organizations must be held accountable for the content they publish. Clarkson's defenders will undoubtedly cry free speech, but this argument misses the point entirely. Freedom of speech, while a fundamental right, is not absolute. It comes with responsibilities, and one of those responsibilities is to refrain from inciting hatred and violence against others. Clarkson's words were not merely offensive, they were dangerous. They had the potential to incite real-world harm against Meghan Markle. We have seen time and time again how hate speech can lead to violence. The price of prejudice is high, creating divisions within society and fueling discrimination. What's particularly concerning about Clarkson's column is not just the content itself, but the fact that it was published in a mainstream newspaper. This normalization of hate speech is a dangerous, slippery slope. When we allow bigotry to become commonplace, we risk becoming desensitized to its insidious effects. 
The normalization of hate speech creates an environment where it becomes more acceptable to express prejudice and discrimination. It emboldens those who hold bigoted views and makes it more difficult to challenge them. We must be vigilant in our efforts to combat the normalization of hate speech. The fight against hate speech is a fight for the soul of our society. The Clarkson incident raises serious questions about the role of journalism in today's society. In an age of misinformation and disinformation, it is more important than ever for journalists to uphold the highest ethical standards. Journalism is not about expressing personal opinions or prejudices. It's about reporting the facts accurately and impartially. It's about holding power to account and giving a voice to the voiceless. Clarkson's column was a betrayal of those principles. We need to return to a journalism that is rooted in facts, fairness and integrity. The responsibility for combating hate speech does not rest solely with journalists and media organizations. The public also has a crucial role to play. We must be critical consumers of information, questioning what we read and hear, and challenging misinformation and bigotry wherever we encounter it. We must also be mindful of our own language and behavior. Words have power, and we must use them responsibly. We must challenge prejudice and discrimination in all its forms. Silence in the face of hate is complicity. Hate is. Clarkson's attack on Meghan Markle was not an isolated incident. It was a symptom of a wider problem within our society, a problem that allows misogyny and racism to fester and grow. We need to have a broader conversation about these issues and how they manifest themselves in our daily lives. Misogyny, the hatred of or prejudice against women, is deeply ingrained in our culture. It manifests itself in countless ways from the gender pay gap to the underrepresentation of women in positions of power. Racism, the belief that different races possess distinct characteristics, abilities or qualities, is another insidious form of prejudice that continues to plague our society. We must challenge misogyny and racism wherever we see them. One of the most disturbing aspects of the Clarkson incident was the lack of empathy displayed by both Clarkson himself and those who defended his actions. It seemed as though they were incapable of understanding the real-world impact of his words on Meghan Markle and on countless others who have been subjected to similar abuse. Empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, is essential for building a more just and compassionate society. When we lack empathy, we become indifferent to the suffering of others. We need to cultivate empathy in ourselves and in others. When we can truly understand and share the feelings of others, we are less likely to inflict pain and suffering. The Clarkson incident should serve as a wake-up call for all of us. It's time for a change. It's time to build a more respectful and civil discourse, both online and offline. We need to start by listening to each other even when we disagree. We need to try to understand different perspectives. We need to be willing to have our own views challenged. Building a more respectful discourse will not be easy, but it is essential if we want to create a more just and equitable society. The Jeremy Clarkson incident has exposed the ugly underbelly of hate speech in the media. This incident is not an isolated one. It is a symptom of a larger problem that has been festering for years. Hate speech, misinformation and biased reporting have become all too common, eroding public trust in the media. It has highlighted the urgent need for greater accountability, for a renewed commitment to journalistic ethics, and for a public that demands better from those who wield the power of the press. We need to foster an environment where journalists are encouraged to uphold the highest standards of integrity and truthfulness. We must move beyond mere condemnation and work towards creating a media landscape that is truly just and equitable. This means not only addressing the symptoms, but also tackling the root causes of media bias and unethical reporting. It requires a collective effort from journalists, media organizations, and the public. This requires a multi-pronged approach. Holding media accountable media organizations must be held accountable for the content they publish. This includes implementing strict editorial guidelines, conducting regular audits, and being transparent about their sources and processes. Public pressure and regulatory frameworks can play a crucial role in ensuring accountability. Empowering ethical journalism. Journalism schools and training programs must prioritize ethics, critical thinking, and media literacy. 
future journalists should be trained to recognize and resist the pressures that lead to sensationalism and bias. Continuous professional development and ethical training should be mandatory for all journalists.